Hey, have you ever noticed that when your food is delivered, the server asks, does everything look good? You haven't even had a chance to taste it. Get that impression. Yet getting that first impression is helpful to ensuring things get off to a good start. That you have to at least deliver what they expected. Giving them chocolate chip pancakes when they expected apple pancakes, not good. Similarly, when you look at your product, how is it packaged? How did they first experience it? What's the whole service feel like? Are they likely to spend more time with it? We're going to discuss first impressions when you serve pancakes, and how it relates to your professional life and more on this episode of Today's Antidote. Stay tuned for Today's Antidote, brought to you by the Renegade Success Network. Today's Antidote features a healthy dose of thought-provoking insights and information for business owners, entrepreneurs, leaders, and nonprofit professionals. Each day since March of 2020, this program has offered that one thing to help you continue on your own unique pathway to success. And now, Renegades, we bring you Bob Graham and Tom Brush. Hey, Tom. Good morning, Bob. How are you? I thought maybe that was it. You were just going to do your jig and not say anything. No, no. I, I was recovering from that opening. It was really well written by you, but I just, I, I butchered it and I'm struggling with that. It's really annoying me. I got to tell you. You got to get over that. That's Well, it, 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 yours are long and meaty and I wasn't, and I didn't read it in advance. And the first thing to tell you, I took a TV and radio production courses, read the script, know what you're going to say. I didn't, and I, I I made some mistakes along the way. So, I, what did you learn from that? What would you I do? I learned that I need to get get focus earlier and read it sooner. I learned that you write longer introductions than me, and that it felt long to me as I read it. And uh, I also learned that, um, well, it's a process, and I have not perfected it. <laughs> so, do you think you'll ever perfect it? Yes, I do. Really. <laughs> you think that there is perfection. Interesting. I do. How will you know if it's perfect? I will never know. Uh, but so how can you and, believe and that it's be perfect? Can I ask you a question, a logistics question? I don't see on the usual place I see our feed that's showing up uh, on Facebook. Okay. So I'm just I'm just giving you that information. You might see it now. Okay. It shows that it's going live on, it wasn't going live on my page, I think, at the moment. Okay, there you go. That's where I'm looking. So, okay, fair enough. Just just doing a little troubleshooting here. So, okay. there it goes. Or were you live. deflecting from no, now, the now thought of live. saying that you think you'll get it perfect, although you're not really sure what that will look like when it's perfect? Interesting. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm just trying to figure out how I can do the things I do because I couldn't do them when it wasn't where it was usually. So it's all about me, Tom. I think we've all realized that. <laughs> yeah, it probably didn't take 510 episodes for us to get to that point. Maybe if you're just watching, you're just starting to discover that. Okay. That now notice I, did my, notice I did my magic and things changed. I, I didn't notice that. Anyhow, welcome everyone who has joined us now that Bob has done his magic, because again, it's all about Bob. And uh, we welcome you to today's episode. This week, we're talking about serving pancakes. If you remember, if you listened, last week we were talking about making the pancakes. Now we're going to talk about serving them. And it's really not about pancakes. It's about those things, those new things that we do that we then put out in the world, whether it's through our team, our organization, our business, or um, as an entrepreneur. So we're going to dive into that a little bit later. Um, we hope that when we do dive into that, though, that if you are watching this on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, or LinkedIn Live, that you will comment and share your thoughts and ideas, because we know that it has a great impact on the show. <clears throat> and at the end of the show, Bob and I will offer our one thing our antidote for today. If you would like to share yours as well, please do. Because we know that someone may not be looking for exactly what Bob and I say. They may be looking for what you have to offer. And so please share your value. <clears throat> if you are listening to this podcast 
Unfortunately, there's no good way to comment. So we, what we would encourage you to do, rather than yelling at your car or yelling at your dog or yourself or your computer screen, uh, we would ask you to share this with friends and others who you think might find value. And maybe you can share your comment with them of why you found value in this and thought that they might as well. We would also love it if you could rate the show because that helps other people see it and get the value that we are trying to share. And how would you like them to rate it, Bob? You know, if I had to ask, I'd ask for five stars. That's just me being, you know, the perfectionist that I want to be. And, you know, you could give us four stars, but five would really, you know, it would make me feel good about my day. Okie dokie. So you've heard it here first. And as always, if you do feel like you're looking for that community and you've enjoyed the podcast, we'd love to have you join our Ring of Renegades Facebook group. It's easy to do. Just go to Facebook, search for Ring of Renegades, and then you can join the other 1,100 strong who are trying to find their next step along their own unique pathway to success. And we would love to have you be a part of that. You can also access all of that information and more on our Renegade Success Network app. Dun, just, da, go, da, da. just go to Google Play or to the App Store on Apple and you can download Renegade Success Network. Dun, da, da. You can, you can <laughs> I like that. You can fully be a part of uh, our community and help yourself take your next step along your own unique pathway to success. So um, we, we got to break in with some important uh, information here. Danny's asking we week LinkedIn live today, Bob, I think he means the LinkedIn live. Um, you okay. Um, well, I'm, I'm fine. It's just, I'm in a bunker and there are people upstairs from the bunker and I'm trying to not be disruptive. So you, you will know where I am by the level of LinkedIn live that you get from me. But thank you for your concern, Danny. I'm OK, I promise. I, I, uh, I'm i not sure that your three second LinkedIn live, if you were, would really have a significant impact on the people above you. Try you never know. Nice. You never know. But I appreciate that. Maybe in a week when Bob feels a little more comfortable in his new bunker, he yes. will he will share that enthusiasm and excitement. We do yes. appreciate you, uh, though, Danny, sharing that comment. I was thinking the same thing, especially because when before we started, he was all fired up and ready to go. And then he kind of leveled it down a little bit. Well, uh, which Danny, brings me to which brings me to my celebration. What is your celebration? The reason I was fired up is I actually exercised yesterday. I don't like running in the cold weather and I haven't run since yeah. it got cold. So it's been it's been a while. I guess the last time I really ran was maybe early November. And I, in the last couple of days, I was thinking about things that I could do to help my mental state to help me calm down a bit. And one of them was running. So I'm in a new bunker location and there was a fitness center I kept driving by. And it, so I joined it yesterday and I went, I ran a couple of miles and it was very, I could just feel a difference in my whole mindset just from the physical exercise. And I slept last night through the whole night. Excellent. That's that's a miracle. So I'm I'm celebrating the fact that we can do things to change. We can exercise and you know exercise really does have mental and physical benefits. Now my legs are a little so tired this morning, but that's okay. <laughs> They'll go away. It's just the tiredness. Danny's a big yeah. runner. I know he recently ran in, I think, a marathon. Might have been a half marathon. Oh, but I think it was a marathon. So congratulations to him. 26.2 miles. Wow. And uh, the fact that he lives in upstate New York uh, means that he's been Ooh. he's been running in really cold weather. So you might want to yeah. ask him wow. for some tips. He might be able to help you out on how to run in uh, cold There you weather. go. All right. Nice. What are you celebrating? I am celebrating that uh, I think I shared with everyone because I was excited. I did an in-person presentation last Friday and the head of the organization reached out yesterday morning after our show and just shared how much they appreciated and enjoyed what we were doing and that there were some challenges along the way. And it's a team. So the team is trying to figure some things out and that there may be an opportunity to help them a little bit more. Uh, which would I, which I would love to do. It's a great organization. They do amazing work in Baltimore City, and the opportunity to help them continue um, reaching out to more people, engaging more, and securing more funds for the work that they do would 
really be a, a, an honor to be a part of. So that was uh, sure. nice to know that it was well received and they may need some further help. Can I ask you a question? Of course. Actually, several. First one, did you see the need that this person brought to you yesterday? Yes, definitely. Did you have plans to contact them Yes. about that need? And I actually did reach out not only to, so that was the executive director that reached out to me. I followed okay. up with the, the director who started it and one of the people on the team who oversaw someone who was struggling a little bit uh, that I could tell. So yes, I okay. did. Because I think one of the things that I'm not always good about is I'll see a need to follow up and do additional work with someone or something, and I won't follow up. I'll expect them to follow up with me. And so I, I saw the opportunity, and I think so often it's like you identify the thing, but you're like, well, I don't think they have the budget for that, or I don't know if they can do that, or I don't know if they'd like that. And I think more and more I'm, I'm – trying to talk to the people at least say, hey, here's some things I observed from that. Have you thought about it this way? Because often, you know, they're wrapped up in their own world. So just well, yeah, don't, want, I think that's don't the, want to bog it down completely, but I think it's an important point in terms of building a business. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, and I think that that's, it's always a good thing. Like as, short, as soon as I got in the car, I started doing my what went well, what didn't go as planned and what would I do differently? And you know, it, it helps. Wait, you mean those aren't just words? Uh, no. Wait, we're supposed or to be doing questions. this stuff? Come on. Uh, yes. No, that's crazy talk. <laughs> and I did it uh, with from the officiating that I did this weekend. I, I tell you, it is becoming. And you a were routine. doing it with me this morning. I was. And so I think that that is just becoming a great way for me to learn from what I do rather than to judge it. I missed some calls. I made some calls that I would change. And I could have said, and it was interesting because I'm mentoring another, helping to mentor another official and we were on the game together. And I asked them the same questions and their response to what they would do differently. I, I'm sorry, to what didn't go as planned was judgment on the calls that they made, things that they did. And I wrote back to myself, well, what if you thought about this question in another way? Think about it is, look, you can't plan for everything. What what happened that you didn't plan for that you may be able to plan for in the future? And so one of the things that happened, not to belabor this point, but one of and one of the things that happened, so I will belabor the point, is we got um, we got the address for the school. The site, the field is not on the campus property or it's on the edge of it. So we weren't exactly sure where it was. Now, the fact that it was a scrimmage, that we were there really early, we it, that wasn't an issue. Had it been a real game and we happened to be running a little late because of traffic or whatever, it would have been a completely different situation. And so we just talked about, okay, what are the things we can do to help ensure that something like that, we get to the field we thought it was supposed to be and that wasn't what it was, how can we better or differently prepare for that? And so I think that was a, an eye-opening experience, I believe, for them because they were only thinking about what went wrong and how would I change something, which you can't change. You can do differently. So that's my- so Why don't I just make it? No, that, that's great. I love it. Let me make this really brief because we're running long here. and. <laughs> Yeah, what I'd say for us celebrating in general, why don't we celebrate the ability to look at things from different perspectives and learn from those things in new ways? Ta-da. Like Simple, sweet, would. to the point. Very well. Done. So Let's now talk pancakes. I'm getting hungry. You're getting hungry. You want to come back to pancakes? Yeah. So we're talking about serving pancakes. And today our topic is going to our focus is going to be on the first impression. And I think that it's interesting. And one of the things that and I wrote it. So one of the reasons I liked about that is it always intrigues me that the servers in a restaurant, they set your food down and they ask, how does it look? You haven't even like you've barely looked down to look at it or even say, how is everything? And you're like, uh, uh, thanks. I haven't even really begun. And yet I think that for them and for us, that immediate impression that people provide us when we 
share our service, an idea, a thought makes a difference, has an impact. And, and I think so often, sometimes either as the consumer or as the provider, we, it's easy to miss that first impression and forget that, that that could have a significant impact on how the rest of the experience goes. And I think I've shared this story once before, and it's, it's a little different. Um, and I had a, an employee, a, a member of my team, who I walked into his office one day and he's like, hey, I have to tell you something. I've accepted another position and another job. And I know that my first impression was all about me and not about my happiness and support for him. And it showed on my face. And that that first impression, I think, was not what he was expecting at the time. I mean, obviously, it was new news, and the griddle was pretty cold when I received it. Um, and it, I had the opportunity to give a different first impression. And I think that's so often, as leaders, what is the way that we share our first impression? If I come to you with a brand new idea, and I get, and here it is, this is what I'm thinking. I think it's going to change the world. I think it's going to make all the difference for our organization. And you're kind of like stone cold face. My enthusiasm and excitement about it is not going to be the same. Similarly, if I were to, if people were to open up our app and they were to look at it, because this is what this is really about, a case study of our app. And it was difficult to maneuver or they couldn't find what they were looking for. Or the image on the front was something that didn't that they didn't feel represented them. That's going to have a, a significant impact on their interest or ability or willingness to continue forward. They then will just t- decide was well was what I paid for it worth what I think I'm getting, or maybe it's not and it's not even worth it. I think, Tom, what where I see it going is often when we're sharing something new, we want to tell people about it. We want to literally, this is going to change your business. This is going to change your team. This is going to change your life. And the reality is we don't like that kind of response because that immediately gets us to, so you think I'm doing something wrong. Or you think I'm doing something that could be better. You're you're setting the right wrong set up set up that so difficult for people. I've found for me that things work a lot better if I talk to people, listen to them, try to understand what they're going through, and then say, "Hey, can I give you a different way of looking at that?" Or I have some ideas that might might provoke you to some different thoughts. Is it okay if I share them? And I think that's warming up that griddle and that's saying I don't want that first impression to be right out of the gate. I know you better than you know yourself, because reality is none of us know the other person as well as that person knows themselves. And if we think that we do, if I think, hey, you're a blueberry pancake guy, I know it. And I serve you blueberry pancakes and you go, no, I like chocolate chip pancakes or I like them with little pecans in them the way my grandmother made them 50 years ago. No, you're a blueberry guy. I know you're a blueberry pancake guy. Eat these blueberry pancakes. The person goes, well, actually, I'm allergic to blueberries, and I'm not going to eat those pancakes. I'm going to leave and go to another store. I'm going to get pancakes elsewhere, or I'm going to go get a burrito or something different. And I think we do that to people all the time, not intentionally, but we try to size them up. And sometimes you can size people up and say, okay, yes, this person fits these categories typically, but there's no guarantee. I mean, I can tell you, I've talked to plenty of women who aren't wearing wedding rings and a fair number of them are married and they just don't like wearing a wedding ring. They're exercising, they have a job that requires them to use their hands more. The the ring is, it doesn't feel comfortable, whatever reason. Now you could say every woman without a wedding ring on isn't married, but you'd be wrong. And if you miscalculate that, that can lead to problems at times. So you've got that, that's just another example. And that's one of those outward symbols, right? That you that we kind of accept as tried and true. Sure. Not so much. And I think we have those same things in business and in teams. But the other thing is, I think those first impressions, you have to be 
in a place where the person you're giving a first impression to is ready. I think so often we we push when it would be better if that person were pulling a little bit and saying, hey, I, you know, wow, you've listened to me for like 15 minutes. Why are you interested in what, what I'm doing so much? Well, actually, I help people like you. Oh, how do you help them? I find that when the conversation shifts from me steering it to here are the five bullet points that you buy off of to more of a this. Oh, this is what's going on. Oh, you know what? I might only talk about one bullet point to someone because that's the only bullet point that matters to them. Sure. If they if they like peanut butter on their pan, pancakes, they don't care about whipped cream and chocolate syrup and all that other stuff. They just want peanut butter. So if I do you want crunchy or do you want uh, not crunchy peanut butter? Oh, wow. You have a choice. Yes. Which would you like? Now they're going, oh, this person, not only does this person validate what I want, but they've given me a choice. I haven't been to a restaurant where they have both. That's sure. really cool. Well, and then and and, uh, and then there's the next step of that, right? So you think that you have all the information. You've asked a million questions and done all the things you can. And at some point, you have to then deliver whatever it is. So if yeah. even if they said that and you had all that information, and now you wanted to walk out. Now the server goes out with the pancakes and you just put a little dollop on it. Or the, the server was like, that person was really excited about peanut butter on their pancakes and you cover the whole pancake with it. Their first impression is still going to be Im important to better understand. OK, that's just another piece of information to help you understand where they're at. That we'll never know. For certain, we can never assume that we're going to know what someone's first impression is because they are going to look at it and they are going to have their own knowledge, experience and perspective that will drive whatever that is. And I think one of the keys for us is and it goes back to my reaction to my teammate is not to be beat off by or turned off by those uh, impressions that we don't agree with or the information that we get that surprises us because that's going to happen right you know even if what it's happens great. If you're it's like, easy to be defensive right absolutely you know i think oh about you don't the, know what i'm trying to do yeah you, you don't about, understand right i think about the the chef right how many times do you see in a movie or in tv where they serve something and the person sends it back because it wasn't what they expected and the chef gets all upset because they're like, this is the way I do it. And they're almost offended by that. You know, and it's kind of like I had an employee once who um, we were doing an event and I showed up for the event. We had talked about it. We hadn't really walked through all of it, but I was like, this is your event, you know, go ahead and, and run it. So when I show up for the event, there was something that I noticed that seemed a little off in my mind, like, so it was an opportunity where you're going to have a bunch of people in a space. And when I looked at the space, I thought the space was small for the number of people. And there was the opportunity to expand it. So it wasn't like they were restricted and like, okay, this is what we're stuck with. And so I shared that as a first impression with them. And they didn't take it so well. I think they thought like I was questioning their judgment, not. And so we had a conversation later about it. And I said, look, I was just trying to share <clears throat> from my experience. I'm not saying that what you did was right or wrong. That's not I wasn't passing that judgment on it. I was just trying to share with you based on what I'm aware of. <clears throat> excuse me, that there might be some challenges that you're going to face that you're not expecting necessarily. And and I think that. Again, I there are two sides to that. I could have reconsidered how hard they'd work. It's right before the event. People are going to show up in 15 or 20 minutes. Although I didn't believe that the change was difficult. That was my perspective. Right. On their side, it was, I've got so many other things to do. This is just one more thing. Why are we changing this now? And I think that there's sometimes that both sides of what are we sharing and how are they receiving it? And how, how do we receive it, I think, is an important part of those first impressions to help us learn. Rather than be upset and feel like they're just judging us, just to take it as, okay, 
that's the way they feel. Now I have to consider, do I move it or not? Do I change it or not? Do I, does the look become different? Does the plan get modified? All of those things that if we are asking the questions of what went well, what didn't go as planned and what would I do differently, you likely are going to learn some things about. If all you do is get angry and judge, it's going to be a not great situation. Because what happens when the chef gets angry? They, you know, the things you see is they spit in somebody's food. They put a fly that in. That doesn't happen. I don't think it happens either. Although. Well, and here's I mean, here's the interesting thing. You know, I saw a couple months ago that 80% of food orders are customized from what's on the menu to what the person wants. So the, you know, the sauce is on the side or. I don't want cheese or I don't want pickles or whatever. So 80% of what you see in a, of what's served from what's in the menu is customized. So if you're a chef, you've got to get, you're not just making the same pancake. You're making the pancake different ways or you're going to run out of customers. Well, and I wonder if that's changed. I wonder if we as uh, consumers have started sharing more feedback. Yeah. Which is why you're starting to see people be more flexible and offer more options and having different different pieces of the puzzle that were maybe never offered before because they're like, this is what we have. This is the way we make pancakes. If you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. Uh, you know, or if you bought this piece of equipment and you want this modification, well, sorry, we don't have that. That's not the manufacturer doesn't create it that way. Yeah, that's good feedback. And we can take it back to them to consider. Uh, and at the same time, this is all we have. And so I'm wondering if we as a society have gotten more comfortable sharing our first impressions and the, you know, the, um, not the consumer, but the producer is more interested in hearing them and being like, okay, that's good feedback. Let me take that back. And we will now think about our second pancake and what that might look like. Well, if you think about the Industrial Revolution, everything was cookie cutter, right? Perfect. Model T's were built one way. You couldn't you couldn't customize it because they wanted that production line. And, and we had that really probably into the 80s or 90s, if sure. you remember. And since then, we've moved to much more of a customized delivery. You know, um, I ordered a Mini Cooper seven or eight years ago, and I could pick everything off the Internet and then the car was delivered to the dealer and I could buy it. I could pick the color of the fenders. I could pick the color of the mirrors. I could pick the roof color. I could pick all the things. Be now, in return for that, it took longer and it cost more because sure. they had to, to you know, prepare it and deliver it. But we've, we've moved to a place, I think, as a society, certainly in this country, where we demand it our way. You know, sure. I Tomorrow. remember when Burger King said, have it your way. Yes. And that was a knock against McDonald's because McDonald's, you don't customize. Burger King, they would say, oh, how do you want your hamburger? Oh, I want with extra mustard. I want extra ketchup, no pickles. OK, fine. Have it your way. And right. I think that was really one of the starting ports for that. When was that? The late mid to late 80s, I want to say. Maybe 70s. Yeah. Yeah. So. That was probably the start of something that we didn't see then. But now, if you go into a, you know, a five guy burgers, right? What do you get? All customizable. You know, they give you a list of all the options and you choose, oh, I'd like grilled onions. No, oh, I don't want pickles. They've gone to the complete other extreme because that's what the consumer wants. And I think for us, what we have to understand is the consumer demands certain things. And we when they demand it, when you hear it consistently demanded in that first impression, you got to pay attention. You know, if, if people are like, oh, I really wanted to be able to pay with a credit card because this is expensive and it's going to sit, it's going to get me points. And that's how my kids and I go on vacation every year. You got to figure out a credit card option. If you, you hear that. You had a bad times, experience. You had a bad experience this weekend with only, or the place that only takes cash, didn't you? No, I had, um, I sent, PayPal money to the wrong person and I can't get it back. <laughs> there. So 300 uh, bucks of wrong money. Oh, that's not good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, exactly. uh, yeah, I do. Cause you mentioned that twice. The, the challenges of not accepting payment one way or the other. Well, I think, so, but it's one of those things that you see often. Sure. 
that 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 is a barrier to you know I, I've had people say, well, I, I don't take PayPal because they take two point nine percent and thirty cents on every transaction. It's like okay. I'll take 90 or 97.1 percent of the money in my hand, <laughs> you know. <laughs> right, in one or two days, rather than waiting yeah. ten days or twelve days for you to turn around the check. Praying the check actually clears. Sure. Whereas with with the PayPal money, it clears right away, and that and that's first impression, right? Because oh, we we only take check or cash. Right. Oh, I, I, we do everything by automatic billing. That's another one. I mean, I have more and more of my customers that want automatic building. Danny, Danny jumps in. What's he got to say? He's got a whole bunch today. It's Mini Cooper's Rock. I have Chili Red Convertible. All right. Re regarding McDonald's, they're now stressing customization and app ordering has become a new way to order fast food. Very interesting. And how long did it take them? Sure. Well, I think you know. that that has become the norm. You go to many, quote unquote, fast food. The, many of the fast food restaurants are now order your own, you know, look at, yep. you know, Chipotle or um, pizza shops where you can walk in and say, I want LA, you can order your own more and more if you go in. Absolutely. Yeah. There's, well, there's and and it cuts down on staffing. It does. So, Bob, and what is your yes, one thing today? I think my one thing is to not um, discount first impressions, especially when they are different than what you're expecting them to be. You know, I think I think what people tell you at the early phases of developing an idea, developing a product, developing a service are absolutely critical to delivering it in a successful way at the end. And I, I, I think back so often to the fact that someone told me something early on and I discounted it only to find out later that, yeah, that was a really important factor. I wish I'd thought of that three months ago. Oh, wait, you told me that three months ago. Darn. Okay. I like that. And I would go with, uh, um, I'm going to go back to first impressions are results in the moment that they aren't necessarily the long-term results. I mean, I know there have been times when I've had either a product or because we've been talking food, food delivered. And I looked at it and I'm like, I don't know about this. Then when I actually tasted it and ate it, I had a much different experience. And so I think that that is an important thing for us to, to realize as consumers is the first impression is important. And yet it's also why people who serve in a restaurant come back again and again and again. So they're not only getting your first impression, they're making sure things are okay. Can I get you anything else? And how was everything at the end? So they are continually gaining impressions. So that first is important, absolutely. And it's no more important than the ones that you are going to get further down the line because there will be additional impressions as things go along. You know, somebody could sign up for your course or your service and the first day doesn't go so well. And if they stick with it, they, they might get to the end and be like, hey, you know what? That was really great. It was funny. I had a basketball coach in college and his big thing was, you know, he was trying to get the best out of his players, not only on the court, but off. And, off. and so that sometimes means that he wasn't always their friend or wasn't always the nice guy. And, you know, at the same time, so many of his players would look back and come back to him and say how much they appreciated the way he was in the moment. Because that first impression of, yeah, this, why is this guy making us run so much? And why is he yelling at me on the bench? And I, helped them prepare for future results where that impression that what they gained in that moment helped them greatly at the end. And so I would say, accept first impressions for what they are and all of them, they are valuable as are future impressions that you will get. So nice. Yeah. Thanks everyone for being a part of our show today. And thank you, Bob. Uh, we look forward to seeing you on future episodes. I wasn't included in everyone. Uh, well, you're special. So I wanted to make sure <laughs> that I was thanking everyone and thanking you for acknowledging my one thing. That's all. Okay. Gotcha. So if you have one thing you'd like to share, please feel free to put it in the comments for people who are watching live now or are going to watch this later at their leisure. Um, we would love to have you include that because we know that someone might be desperately seeking for what you have to share. 
and we look forward to seeing you inside of Ring of Renegades Facebook group because that is a great place to share that information as well. And if you're looking for more than that, you know, I think one of the things we talk a lot about the Facebook group, which is awesome. And I think it's a great community. And yet I think sometimes people are looking for more than that. And one of the things that we have created and, and people have taken advantage of is our Renegade Success Network, which is an opportunity to go even deeper, not only with Bob and I, to figure out your next steps when you are stuck and you don't have the antidote to your, to your challenge, and also to connect and engage with others in your community and really create a network of people who are interested and actively supportive of what you are trying to accomplish. So if you'd like to learn more about the Renegade Success Network, you could either say, type in, I'm a renegade in the comments, and we'll reach out and connect with you, or reach out to either Bob or I through Facebook or any of the any of the ways that you get this show. There are ways to send direct messages. So please reach out to one of us because we would love to have a conversation about what that looks like, get your first impression, and then see if it makes sense for you. So with that, we look forward to seeing you inside the Ring of Renegades Facebook group, chatting with you about the Renegade Success Network. And if those of those happen today, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow on our next edition of today's antidote, 8 a.m. Eastern Time. You're supposed to say, have a great day, everyone. Sorry. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Hey, and embrace the renegading you and get some exercise. Yes. Get some exercise. All right. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks for listening to today's antidote powered by the Renegade Success Network. The Renegade Success Network helps you confidently create your own unique pathway to success. To learn more about the Renegade Success Network and how you can take your next step, follow us on Twitter, connect on LinkedIn, or join the Ring of Renegades Facebook group. For full details on how you can join our community, go to renegadesuccessnetwork.com. Embrace the renegade in you.